Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and I am joined by hardware editor Patrick Stone. Hey guys. And today we're doing a video on what makes a, or actually what makes up a motherboard. We're talking about specific components on the board. So uh, some of our key topics here, we'll be talking about the PCH or Platform Controller Hub, also the chipset, uh, PCI Express and how X8, X16, that stuff works and is relevant to you. And then of course the VRM, which is what handles the uh, power phasing. So we'll jump in and start with the VRM or voltage regulator module. And uh, the VRM here is comprised of multiple uh, chokes and other devices that Patrick will tell you about in a moment. But at a top level, what the VRM does is steps down the power from the power supply to a usable voltage that the CPU can use. So your CPU might be specced for 1.2, uh, maybe you've overclocked and you're at 1.3 volts. It's actually phasing down the 12 volt supply from the power supply uh, through these phases here on the board and, and converting it to that more usable voltage. And it's, uh, it's responsible for delivering cleaner voltage to reduce a V droop or voltage drops, which introduce instability in the CPU, especially when overclocking. So if you're overclocking and you have a voltage drop because your motherboard is lower quality and not delivering clean voltage, uh, that can actually create a, uh, a blue screen or other errors. So, um, Patrick, I'll let you talk more about the specifics of the VRM. Thanks, Steve. If you're looking at the phase power design, each of these little phases has three components. The first component, which you can see here, are these little circular devices. Uh, those are your capacitors. You've probably seen capacitors before. There's nothing new there, but they are one of the parts of a VRM. Another part that's right beside that, it says SFC on here. The C is for a choke, and the choke is one of the essential parts of a VRM. The SF in this one just stands for super ferrite. Um, and you can use your elemental reference for the ferrite. And then the, the next piece here underneath this heatsink, uh, pretty cool little dragon type heatsink. Um, underneath there, you're going to find driver MOSFETs. Driver MOSFETs are a fancy version of a MOSFET, which is a low power circuit. And the driver MOSFET has three parts inside of it one driver IC, and then two more MOSFETs. And it's just like an improved version of the MOSFET. So it's just a, in this particular case, uh, a, a really nice VRM that's gonna control that power reduction. Um, I think Steve's gonna go now and uh, give us a little information about when you're looking at the motherboard box or looking at the specs, you might see something like eight plus two. And Steve, what, is, what, that, what does that mean? Sure, so uh, if you're looking on Newegg, the product page or something like that, and you see eight plus two power phase design or phase power design, or you see four plus one or something mm -hmm. in that range, uh, the number preceding the plus is actually indicative of the number of phases that the power goes through. So on this board, we can actually count the chokes, um, which are on either side of the CPU, and that tells us how many phases are on this board. So we can see four on this side, four on the top. That's eight, so that's the eight plus. And then the number after the plus is uh, how many phases are dedicated to RAM or hypertransport if you're using AMD or other, uh, other devices that need to step the power down. So um, over here, we actually we have two phases, I think, for the memory on this board. It might be one. I think it's two, though. And uh, on AMD boards, you'll have one for hypertransport as well. Next, though, we're actually going to talk about the PCH, or Platform Controller Hub. And this is the chipset. This is a very critical part of your board selection process when you're using any type of CPU, AMD or Intel. They both have different types of chipsets, like Z87 or H87 or 990X or 990FX. I'm actually going to let Patrick go into detail on the PCH and what it does. It used to be the Northbridge and Southbridge, but AMD merged it and unified it originally. Intel has taken that as well. They called it the Platform Controller Hub. AMD still uses bridge terminology. So uh, I'll let you talk about the specifics. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so you guys are the gamers nexus, so what matters most is certainly video games. Well, maybe not. That's it. Maybe that, that may not be everything. but Literally it's... the most important thing in the okay, world. Okay, yeah, it's the most important <laughs> thing. Let's be serious. Um, but anyway, so this chipset, this platform controller hub on an Intel board, is certainly going to factor into your gaming tremendously. Uh, one of the ways that it does that is it's going to determine whether or not you can overclock the CPU, right? So we're looking at the socket here. And if you have something like, let's say, an H-series uh, chipset from Intel, then you're not going to have that overclocking functionality. It's going to be locked due to that chipset. 
but if you have something like a Z series, then you got the overclock. So selection of the chipset really matters if you want to overclock and get more performance out of your machine. Another thing that it has uh, a, a determining factor in is these little guys over here, you get your SATA ports, right? So if you want to go RAID, let's say you want to go RAID 0, a striped RAID array, so you can get more speed out of, say, like a regular uh, spindle-based hard disk drive, then the chipset has to be able to support that. And again, just check your chipset's feature set to see if it can do the RAID. Last thing that I want to go to on a chipset is this PCI Express. Um, the chipset also plays a role in the number of PCI Express lanes that the motherboard can feature. In this case, you got like PCI Express X16s, PCI Express X8s, and PCI Express X1s. And so the chipset plays a role in determining um, how many lanes of PCI Express you're going to get. And that is extremely important if you want to use two graphics cards or three graphics cards or if you have an even better motherboard four graphics cards so all I'm titans a, yeah well maybe gtx 780 ti's maybe 780 ti's okay all right but titan sounds cool <laughs> indeed it does all right <laughs> but uh, i'm going to pass it back to steve now because he's going to go at us into a little bit of pci express for you sure so pci express as it comes to uh to gaming we are mostly looking at x16 and x X8 slots. X1s, you're generally looking at things like video capture cards, audio cards, uh, generally smaller expansion stuff that isn't doing heavy duty video work. And then the X16s, X8s are obviously for video cards. And uh, you can actually count the number of pins and see if it's X16 or X8. Um, and so on this slot, we can physically see that there are half the pins as on the X16 slot. And you can actually see that on the back of the board as well right there as far as specifics once again we'll throw to patrick yeah so the, the the reason that the number of pins here matters and the reason that the number of lanes matters is that's that's how many bits per second you're going to be able to transfer and so with something like a graphics card or now we're moving closer to pci express solid state drives those things are going to be transferring lots of data per second and so an x1 slot simply can't transfer enough data per second and so we have to move to an x8 or an x16 and if you want that ultra graphics in your video game you got to have the you got to have the ability to support that sort of bandwidth that again like we said earlier is tied back into the chipset steve you want to close it out for us yeah so just some consumer advice and buying advice here to kind of go back through all three of these components again when you're shopping for a motherboard uh, first of all check the link in the description below for a full article on picking the best motherboard for you um, to quickly recap some of those points though uh, looking at VRMs when you're looking for a good phase power design and a board uh, specifically for overclocking. It differs for AMD and Intel. Intel, you want a little bit more phases. AMD, you tend to be pretty good at 6 plus X phases uh, for basic overclocks. You might, might want to go 8 if you're doing something more extreme. Um, heat sinks are pretty critical for uh, extreme overclocks because obviously you're driving a lot more heat through the MOSFET and through everything else around the CPU. So if you are doing OC and then grab one with heat sinks, yeah. if you're not, you can probably lose a heat sink or two. Um, looking at the PCH for Intel, your choices are basically Z87 or H87, unless you go with a server socket. And uh, Z87 is what we generally recommend for mid range to high end uh, systems that are doing more overclocking or need unlocked features or might want a SLI down the road or a crossfire. Uh, H87 is completely good for any mainstream build or any budget build where you, you don't even care about overclocking. It's not a concern to you. Go with H87. It'll save you some money. And again, full articles, two of them actually on this in the link below. Finally, PCI Express. Don't worry too much about X16 versus X8 because in testing at the end of the day, uh, a dual X8 or triple X8 config is going to have a delta of a couple percent between more X16s, like dual X16, oh, yeah. if you can even find one of those boards uh, for an affordable price. So don't uh, don't stress out about dual X16 versus X8, X8, because it's going to be like a 3% delta max. Right. And um, other than that, that's, I mean, that's pretty much all the buyer advice we have for you here. Uh, again, check the links in the description below. We have a couple more videos coming up, so subscribe to the channel if you liked it, and we will see you all next time. Peace.